community focus is essential. So we wanted to get back to the communities and we were continuing to do that. We make sure that the money we give back is not at our corporate headquarters, it's in all of our footprints. We need to serve those communities and we continue to do that. And a, a value driven is a, essential to us as well. We're in Northeast Wisconsin. We don't nickel and dime our customers. We don't charge nuisance fees and we wanted to make sure they are taken care of, uh, which we did during this time. We live this and I look at every business decision. Is it true to who we are? And then if you, you can go online or see our vision statement, it's also important, is it where we want to go? And that's really our vision statement tells us where we want to go. And then is it true to ourselves? And I recommend you go to, you know, bank first, uh, wi.bank, and you can actually see our cultural statement because that really defines the character of the entire organization. And we pride ourselves on living that every day. On a daily basis, I think we had 150 people tested. So that includes all our players, coaches. Yeah, once you got, once you, te somebody tested positive, you got them right out of the facility. So the, the whole intent was, so um, you, you wouldn't have an outbreak. Um, there were a couple situations where teams, you know, had multiple players at one position uh, that missed the games. Oftentimes though, and this was one of the, situations that we had a little bit um, is what the league has. So obviously, if you test positive, you've got to sit out. You know, I think you had to sit out 10 days and you had to be symptom free. But then they also, the league put in place, does after somebody tests positive, they do contact tracing. And we've got, I don't know if you can see, I've got this <laughs> it's device called Connexon. So, and whenever I get within six feet, of somebody else who was wearing one of these and we had all of our players and coaches and anybody who's around the players has the same device and so if you are when you're within six feet of each other uh, that information is recorded and then it also times how long you were close to them so if somebody tests positive and then you are deemed to be what they call a high risk close contact you have to sit out for at least five days and have five negative tests. When you, you read about certain players missing a game, oftentimes it's somebody that tested positive, but then the others were deemed to be high risk close contacts. So they had to be out for at least uh, five games or five, uh, five days. One of the things that we focused on, particularly with our work, both with Family Bridges and with Bridges Excel, is to consider how we could lead ourselves first in order to lead others well. If we are not taking care of ourselves as leaders, then we're going to burn out and we're going to experience fatigue and compassion fatigue. And then how are we going to take care of others? We adopt a leadership level to some extent and we're giving and giving and giving. And if other people are constantly taking and taking and taking, um, then that just leads to exhaustion. So that that was, I would think, is one of the primary focuses that we zoned in really early on when the pandemic hit is equipping um, all of our leaders, not just within our organization, but within the network of providers that we work with um, to be able to understand what mindfulness is and practice just good coping skills. So as we are taking care of others, we don't forget to take care of the self. Leading yourself first to lead others well has been a motto of 2020 that we want to continue to instill. We, we, we started with the executives taking the largest pay cuts, both in terms of dollars and a percentage of salary. Obviously, the senior executives are going to be earning the the larger salary so we took the largest percentage pay cuts for for people like myself and other senior executives and then you know sort of scaled it down and and below a certain threshold we did not cut people's pay simply because um you know frankly we have a lot of employees who who are you know are not you know they're not making six figures and and we i didn't think it was appropriate for for a lot of those employees to be taking pay cuts uh, because given given the hours they work and their their job requirements um 
you know, it's, it's hard enough to, to deal with that without taking a pay cut. And we, we try to obviously balance things based on an economic and business needs test. Um, but no question about it, everybody, everybody in the organization um, was affected in some way. We obviously eliminated discretionary bonuses and a lot of perks for employees. Um, everybody we really understood it. Um, and I, I felt frankly that when we were doing furloughs, um, certain perks for the remaining employees seemed out of place and inappropriate. Um, so we, we ended those perks. And again, so everybody was, was sort of taking it and, and absorbing some financial responsibility for, for a different, difficult situation. Yes, we, we could see what the virus was doing in China. Uh, we have our second largest market in the world is China, so we had great visibility in the first quarter to what was happening in China. We watched the virus move to Europe and, and impact our operations in Europe. But I think all of us were a little bit uh, ignorant in, in, in the United States when we all here and, and we all participate in the, in the stock market saw the fastest decline in the stock market in history. So we had seen the pandemic wreak havoc around the world, but it was interesting how uh, none of us really thought that it would impact the market, certainly in as fast and a material way as it did. Um, but we all learned a, a bit of a lesson there in taking the pandemic seriously. We, uh, we like this quote from Winston Churchill, uh, a pessimist sees difficulty and in, uh, in every opportunity an optimist sees an opportunity in every difficulty. So we came up with this ethos, Kohler Strong, and uh, we're committed to coming out of this stronger, smarter, and faster. And we created a, a playbook and resources for a global organization, but really allowed, as I said, decentralized leadership to make decisions uh, closest to, to what was happening in their region or their plant or their part of the organization uh, based on some broad guidelines. And we really believe that's key to handling any emergency or crisis. Obviously, we all had to learn how to go to school or, or work in different remote uh, in different ways. Really proud of how our associates <clears throat> drove significant contribution in PPE, uh, making it, sourcing it for different organizations around the world, and then uh, also other uh, elements of stewardship in our organization. This is a, a shower trailer we had developed a number of years ago, and we sent it to the Javits Center in New York to support the uh, the emergency hospital that was set up at the Javits Center and then went out west to support um, actually homeless people during COVID or didn't have a place to shower or go to the bathroom. And so we've been using it in a variety of ways. I think it's probably uh, either moved to Texas or, or moved to other areas of the country. But I think one of the things that was really important to us in terms of leading through the pandemic was grounding ourselves in our values. Uh, so we talk about a mission at Lining Kugels and, and our parent company of Molson Coors. We're united in that regard of uniting people to celebrate all life's moments. And, uh, you know, it's a great beer, it's a great beverage to uh, celebrate uh, those life's moments. And, and beer is that beverage uh, that my great-great-grandfather first brewed in, in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin for those thirsty lumberjacks to, to bring them together at the end of a 12-hour workday was, was really, really important to us in terms of uh, leading dur during the pandemic. And you see our, our first one there, which is uh, putting people first. And I, I come back to that time and time again that um, we as people leaders throughout the organization um, really had to check in on, on our people. One of the hardest things that I had to do during the uh, pandemic was to furlough um, the majority of our team members here at our Liney Lodge Hospitality Center. And uh, that happened in, in March when we closed on March 16th. We officially announced the furlough in, in April. And we were we were closed all the way until uh, the end of June. We started to bring some people back uh, during June. Being bold and decisive, I think, was another uh, value that, that came out of the pandemic. And 
as I said, we 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 furloughed team members with the exception of three of our managers. Um, and we began to transition our business uh, at the Liney Lodge to more of a direct consumer business. The timing was good because we had just implemented a new shop site at Liney.com, a new shopping site, maybe using a platform called Shopify. I'm sure some of you have heard of Shopify, a Canadian firm that rose like a rocket during the pandemic. And that allowed us to better fulfill, um, put orders out and fulfill our orders as well as get orders from customers. Uh, our consumers were staying at home. They had more time. Um, they were saving, uh, but yet, you know, they wanted to touch uh, a piece of their favorite brand. And uh, we boldly and decisively uh, became more of a direct-to-consumer business and, and got really aggressive in terms of marketing DTC. And the other thing that we did was we began to sell beer in can crawlers. And the, and the way we got into that uh, here at the Liney Lodge, we always had a 32-ounce fresh draft beer can crawler. But because we were closed at the Liney Lodge, we had beer in kegs and draft beer only lasts up to 60 days. So we said, you know, why don't we give away can crawlers free to frontline workers? So healthcare workers, firemen, policemen, anybody that, that was kind of on the front lines of fighting the pandemic, uh, we put out the word uh, to them and they were able to come up to the Liney Lodge and, and get a free can crawler. So we're able to use up all of the draft beer that we had, but it was a great way. We we had over 3,000 of our can crawlers that we uh, gave away. This course is such a success based on our feedback from our students that we are committed to a yearly offering for our students that emphasize the most important business tops of the day with real world learning from those actually leading in these areas. So stay tuned. Lakeland will continue to work with our great business partners to offer meaningful opportunities for our students in the years to come.